ओके जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम वी आर बैक विद शानदाना गुलजार खान पीटीआई मेंबर इलेक्ट नेशनल असेंबली ऑफ पाकिस्तान अस्सलाम वालेकुम शानदाना थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग अस शानदाना लेट्स टॉक टुडे लेट्स टॉक टुडे अबाउट द 9th ऑफ मई the black day in pakistan um several tragedy tragedies took place that day um we had those several acts of vandalism that cannot really be excused uh but then more than that we had the loss of life we had 25 of our shaheed being killed by unarmed killed by uh the law enforcement agencies the live ammunition being fired on our unarmed protesters um you know and all of this as a result of the unlawful abduction of chairman imran of former prime minister imran khan of all the things that have happened over the past one year in pakistan which do you think would be the biggest tragedy so far uh, thank you so much saman i think i'll start with your main question that was 9th of may the black day for pakistan it's being peddled as such by certain interested quarters but i'm afraid the truth is far from it the 9th of may and i'll get to this later was the epitome of a false flag operation which was already predicted by khan saab on the 25th of march a week after the events of the 14th and 18th of march whereby he was attacked in his home in zaman park then his wife was attacked uh, there was a murder attempt on him in the judicial complex in islamabad after those two events uh, imran khan the former prime minister chairman of pti he had a huge presser on the 25th of march and he predicted a false flag operation whereby his party would be implicated in acts of vandalism and arson which would be committed government by the illegal country. government and at the same time the blame would be pinned on pti workers that's exactly what happened this is a very old script it happened at the time of the partition of east pakistan now bangladesh and so we're used to seeing this drama but let's talk about the concept of a black day where a country who has had more than 5 heads of state and or prime ministers murdered in a short history of 75 years we saw the murder of qadiazm babai qom the, the first governor general of pakistan there was no ambulance for him we saw the murder of liaquat ali khan when he refused to turn back the clock on rcd ceto cento three agreements with iran and turkey that would have changed the fate of pakistan forever they were thereafter revoked by general ayub then we saw the murder the execution of a sitting prime minister uh, zulfikar ali bhutto then we saw the uh, of course general zia is a different story general zia was a collaborator and he was uh, finished off the way the usually big brother does all these countries involved in using puppets uh, puppet regimes in our countries in developing countries the way qadafi they got rid of him the way they got rid of uh, 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 the iraqi president so this was general zia who was just in a long line of people like saddam hussein who was used and then thrown away Finally, we come to the murder or the shahadat of Benazir Bhutto. Benazir Bhutto's husband became the president a few months after her death. Not a single investigation has led to any conclusive evidence of who killed her. Everybody knows. So, so this is the. These are the black days of Pakistan when your elected prime ministers are assassinated. Twenty fifth May was a black day for Pakistan. The partition of East and West Pakistan was a black day for Pakistan. these are the black days which no one dares to talk about just read the hamoud rahman commission report it will tell you what's happened to this country black day for pakistan when the day when arshad sharif went to the foreign office from this embarrassment of a foreign minister who sent a message from his office i don't know whether he signed on it or not but it went for the foreign of pakistan to dubai that arshad sharif should be exiled from uae to any other country and he was there after murdered in kenya zilesha especially a special child a differently able human being was murdered in police custody and to top it off maryam nawaz audio leak said that she wanted people to run uh, run him over or over his dead body over his corpse so it looks like he was not murdered during custody but uh, through a uh, police uh, through a pti staged attack and somehow they ran him over those are the black days for pakistan 9th may 10th may is a black day for pakistan you abduct a former elected prime minister of pakistan he is in the court premises they violated every principle there is in the constitution everything that sanctifies the constitution that was destroyed armed by a paramilitary troops who are not answerable to the police came barged into the premises of islamabad high court and abducted a former prime minister black day for pakistan was the 10th of may 
when a kangaroo court was set up inside a police station in H9, converted in a court to do a summary trial of Khan. Were it not for the spontaneous public protests, Khan would not be alive today and be with us today. There are other uh, 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 sort of, uh, you know, sort of assassination attempts on his life that we're hearing about, and you will, you'll be very um, uh, circumspect. You must note that I didn't say that 3rd November, the day Khan was attacked, was a black day. That was an attack on a person, but it was also an attack on the heart of Pakistan. Yet you never saw any protester come out, burn anything. Why is that? Absolutely. That should have been the black day for Pakistan. So this is all a drama. 9th May is not a black day for Pakistan. 25th May last year, when Dr. Yasmin Rashid was attacked, when the daughter-in-law of Alama Iqbal, Justice Rashda, was, uh, pick, was harassed at her home. Uh, 9th, 10th May, Qasim Suri's wife was picked up. Usman Da's mother was uh, harassed. Uh, Kamal Shawza was beaten up. Alia Hamza was arrested. Sanam Javed, Tayyaba Raja. Um, uh, the, the, the most embarrassing part of it all, the granddaughter of a former chief of army staff, Khatija Shah, was told to surrender and she's been arrested under the anti-terrorism court laws for doing what? Yesterday, though, it put an end to the pack of lies that they've been peddling. Dr. Yasmin Rashid has been released saying that she did not orchestrate the attack on Gore Commander House in Lahore. That begs the question, if it was such a black day, if people knew that on the 9th and 10th people would react, why for seven hours the most sensitive installations in the military installations in Lahore left without guard, without police, without military protection? Who was giving those orders out. So so that's why I'm going to just end my answer there on the 9th of May. And whether it was a black day or not, absolutely not. It was a false flag operation. And I'll give you details in our forthcoming discussion. Absolutely. And I, that, that's where I would like to take our discussion, actually. The false flag attack. We are now get, gaining like a huge, there's a growing body of evidence, uh, including, uh, you know, eyewitness testimonies that there was infiltration by certain um, unidentified uh, men, at least three men who have not been identified. These people who were inciting the crowd, getting people to enter the the Jinnah, the now Jinnah house, which was the core commander house up until now. Um, in on the contrary, the leadership, there's video evidence and I witness, witness of accounts of the leadership actually telling the people to pull back, to stay peaceful, to, do, to not enter uh, any uh, any public or any private residences. So let's let's talk about that. And let's talk about the role of the illegal, the unlawful, the unconstitutional caretaker set up in Punjab right now. Uh, thank you, Saman. It's both illegal. Uh, and immoral, uh, both in KPK and in uh, Punjab. Let's let's be very clear on one thing: uh, the maintenance of public order, the 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 order under which people are being harassed, abused, picked up from their homes. Yesterday, um, there were raids in the last three days on Murad Said's house in Swat, uh, Omar Ayub, Akbar Ayub, Uzmar Yaz Jadoon, Momin Abbas, Ali Jadoon, Temur Chagda. Uh, Atif Khan PTI. So after they're done with Punjab, forming Punjab, they're now trying to terrorize KPK. Suppress the voters, suppress the people. That if you don't, uh, I mean, some of the MNAs that have openly left the party have not just uh, given up a party, uh, as we say, party cards or party positions, but have actually left the party. Uh, they've, they've been telling us harrowing stories of abuse, of making fake videos of their daughters, of which Mariam Nawaz and her company are experts. So there's different kinds of abuse going on at different levels. There's physical violence, there's sexual assault. Uh, and even in prison, they've sort of decided that they were going to treat different people differently, women from prominent political backgrounds or with families who could ask questions and raise a ruckus. They have avoided abusing them physically. They've abused them in other ways. For example, Senator Falak Nasir Rali, she was put on a bed which was about six to eight inches away from the ceiling fan. So she couldn't dare move because, you know, a ceiling fan can chop you to pieces if your head is close enough. So there's different kinds of abuse. Some people are breaking, others are not. You know, bravo on those women and men who still stand strong. Sheryar, Alia, all these other people. Now, interestingly, uh, on the issue of the false flag operation and the evidence available, I had a rather long discussion on uh, Twitter. One, one person put up a picture and saying that, his or her blood was boiling because there's a PTI worker supporter desecrating a, a monument of a, a fallen comrade or of a soldier. Now I looked at that picture and I realized this was a 
sort of a dumb operation instead of a false flag operation this was a dumb operation happening there's three men two of them with crew cuts one of them wearing a pti hat and a stupid scarf there are five policemen standing behind him one on busy on the mobile one adjusting his glasses two adjusting their hats and smiling there's two army military officers watching this entire scene where the guy has picked up the monument there's another man a shadow you can see telling him to pose and he's taking his picture and i got into an argument with the person who had posted this on twitter that are you out of your mind even if you're peddling the lies that this administration is propping up do you realize what you've done you've put up a picture you've actually captured the operation and then posted it how stupid does that get and what i'll do is i'll share that picture with you right now please throw it on your screen i've numbered the people who are watching this in place and I, this is inside a military installation in mardan where nobody can get in without the direct and uh, how do you say direct orders as well as influence of the people on the inside it doesn't work that way so there is no doubt that all the videos all the evidence everything that we are seeing on the one hand is prime example a false flag operation another stellar uh, journalist we called milifafas in pakistan milifafas simply means somebody who will accept uh, bribes without blinking mm -hmm. he has given a whole theory and speech on one particular person from the government who is ushering in workers whether pti or otherwise into different sensitive installations including ghq saying that i've been told that he's been arrested and the whole time that this lefafa is making this speech he can't keep his eyes open one of the biggest giveaways when you lie is that you can't face the people that you talk to mm -hmm. you start closing your eyes and you start making facial expressions i'll send you that comedic moronic interview so i'm sorry my words are harsh but they're trying their level best to decimate khan and it's not a, it's it's not a, a secret anymore starting from anti terrorism ludicrous uh, anti terrorism cases against khan to as you know the most embarrassing one for this government i mean uh, getting a fake cleric to announce that khan's very married wife is not actually his wife that he's living in sin with her i mean this goes beyond the disgusting so they've tried everything with khan they've tried fake paternity cases terrorism cases money laundering cases they mm -hmm. can't come up with anything so the question is how to silence him they can either murder him which they tried a number of times or they can discredit him that hasn't worked either so what do they do they take away those that are supporting khan and yesterday you know the regular joe average joe in pakistan who doesn't have money who doesn't have an education he does have a lot of common sense and the word is on the street whether and this is a joke as well whether khan gives his party ticket to a tree or an electricity pole so the people are going to vote for khan and so that is the problem that these corrupt dynasties are trying to make use of the 9th may events to blacken khan's name to darken the days for pti abusing harassing pakistan telling them they have no room in public space all to one end to make sure that they can eradicate our party and that's never going to happen the more you suppress the more you oppress they couldn't do away with the palestinian struggle for the last 75 years of abuse they couldn't do away with the kashmiri cause of struggle for the last 70 years 75 years despite horrific abuse what makes them think that the pakistani demographic which 75% of the people are under the age of 30 they can do away with us by the way not in that demographic but the idea is to quell khan you you just talked about uh, shandana the bringing it to a judicial end so that's where actually i want to take my last question for this week too the military trials the military court trials the trial trying the trying civilians under military courts including imran khan himself Let, let's talk about the legal implications of this legal international legal implications because the human rights watch has already stated that this goes against international law this goes against um this goes against morality and law talk to me about the legal implications for of it for pakistan on in the you know in a global perspective to be honest some in the global perspective is at the moment disappointing and full of uh, weak men as khan has said about narendra modi small men in big offices and i see that across the globe not a single world leader has condemned the violence against women that is taking place in pakistan everybody's concerned about afghan women everybody's concerned about iranian women but we're just a stone's throw from them it's almost like pakistani women and pakistani pti workers are children of a lesser god 
that is embarrassing frankly for those countries that pretend to care about human rights they pretend to care about the due process of law they pretend to care about human rights they have made a mockery of themselves and to what end if the game is to take pakistan and khan away from china they've wrecked it there is such huge anti these big western developed economies such huge sentiment against them that they're completely silent not a single word from any one of the administrations yes uh, the american congressmen 60 of them congressmen and congresswomen wrote to uh, secretary blinken and president biden and that i thought was admirable but more needs to be done the pakistani diaspora in particular needs to hold their parliamentarians to account they pay for their campaigns they support them but if that campaign money is being run to maintain silence on the kind of horrific abuses in pakistan including the maintenance of public order including military tri- trials of civilians including illegal detention alia hamza told us yesterday from when she was brought to court that there were 19 women in prison with her only 13 of them were brought before the court where are the other six women other women who have been released have told us harrowing tales of women's clothes being torn off in prison again the poor women the women who don't have rich or famous fathers so that elitism is being practiced in prison as well to scare the life out the, of the uh, of of the poor ones never to come back on the streets again and i'm afraid that's not going to happen we are always going to be on the road asking for our rights we're going to be in parliament we're going to be everywhere where my constitution allows every article of the constitution is being violated as we speak including international human rights comes second what about the pakistani constitution the pakistani constitution does not allow allow, allow trial of civilians and military courts unless there is a clear and present threat of terrorism now it's interesting my province in balochistan since this ridiculously crook uh, corrupt dynasties have come into power last year april my province which is kp and uh, balochistan we've been subject to horrific abuse by terrorists bomb blast after bomb blast in police stations and mosques no pakistani and no muslim could do that and yet we're facing that on top of that they're going to take people innocent people innocent protesters who have not so much as picked up a stick or a gun they're being tried to what end the constitution doesn't allow it the pakistani regular law doesn't allow it international law doesn't allow it again this is just to send chills down the spine says people are saying that this happens general zia's era when one has to remind these gestapo apologists and these nazi sympathizers including almost 99% of the ngos in pakistan which are foreign funded mostly by western donors that why aren't they speaking why are they silent on these abuses of young men and women in pakistan of differently abled people of the elderly of children young boys from the age of 8 to 18 have been arrested and paraded in court and abused in police stations so the thing is the following we are witnessing a large scale hypocrisy if you recall at some point in time before the second world war there was huge appeasement of hitler and you saw what happened to the jews in europe at that time this is the same kind of silence and appeasement that we're seeing from the world and this appeasement will only come the chickens will come home to roost hillary clinton had said this once about pakistan and let me remind the entire world that supports this, this corrupt dynasties right now the corrupt powers that be in pakistan she had said that if you grow snakes in your own backyard eventually they will bite your own children that's exactly what is being done in pakistan now snakes are being bred to bite imran khan to harm imran khan and his party but i can assure you this will come back full circle we pakistanis we pakistani women are not going to accept the shoddy treatment we will fight for ourselves we are strong we don't need anyone to talk in our behalf however the rest of the world that is either orchestrating this in pakistan or watching this are complicit the same way you were seen as gestapo and nazi sympathizers whether silent overt or covert the same way this is how pakistanis are viewing the world for supporting these corrupt dynasties and the corrupt people in charge those who have power and are subjecting our innocence to abuse of untold proportions epic proportions thank you so much for your time right now i loved what you said in the end yes you are right the pakistani women right now are the strongest i have ever seen them before i am proud to call myself a part of this community i am proud to know you and for you to be a part of this community Chandana, we will continue our discussion again next week, inshallah. Thank you so much once again for your time.